Good morning. It's me. It's Tuesday, June 29th. I'm Kenny Polcari, host of the party. Morning market commentary. Everything you need to know to get your day started. What happened yesterday, what's going to happen today, and what may happen later on in the week. So what happened yesterday? Not a whole lot right? Stocks churned, right? As it's taking in the recent action from last week as we hit high after high after high, right? As all concerns are now abating, no one's seeming to be concerned about anything anymore, right? The big banks are rewarding investors, just like I told you in my note last week, with big dividend increases and stock buybacks. The 10-year treasury is remaining very quiet. Gold backs off a little bit and oil just holds just above $72 a barrel. Kathy Wood files for a Bitcoin ETF, raising all kinds of excitement around that currency. And what are we having for dinner tonight? We're having the chicken scarf yellow, but we'll get to that at the end. So as I said, stock continued to push higher and a clear sign that investors are not concerned about anything, apparently. Not inflation, not rising rates, not infrastructure, not rising taxes, not even COVID, right? Demand for all assets remains strong. The S&P this quarter alone is up 8%. Uh, and we haven't even added in dividends yet. The Nasdaq's up 10%. The Russell's up 6%. The Dow is up only 4%. And a real turn of events, the transports, which had been up 11% mid-May, have backed off and are now in last position, only up 3% for the quarter. But that says nothing about the year-to-date performance, which would define a successful year for anyone. With the Dow and the NASDAQ both up 12% year to date, the S&P up 14%, the Russell still up 7%, and the transport's up a whopping 18%, as it's been an amazing journey. The persistent climb in stocks and other assets just underscores how strong the markets are and how intent investors are to put money to work. A report out this morning from Morgan Stanley reveals that 50% of independent companies are raising wages. For employees, which only means that they're raising prices for consumers, right? So brace yourself for a higher cost of living. A cost which I argue is not going to be transitory. But that's another conversation because I'm on the complete opposite side of that argument. Uh, so what else happened yesterday? Facebook now becomes the fifth member of the Trillion Dollar Club, joining you-know-who, right? Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. So Facebook now becomes number five. They had a trillion dollar market cap valuation. It is amazing, really, when you think about it. Ten-year treasuries remain below the 1.5% 1, 1. mark, ending the day yesterday, yielding 1.47, which is giving strength to stocks, right? The VIX falling once again, ending the day at 1571, a level not seen since February 7th of 2020 right before the onset of the pandemic here in the U.S. and the world that sent the, the VIX soaring to 85.27 on February 21st, 2020. Gold rallied 14% into the low 1900s over the last couple of months when we all thought the yields were going to spike into the 2 plus percent range, um, but have since retreated. Once again, broken all down through the trend line supports, ending the day yesterday at 1770 an ounce, a decline of seven and a half percent, seven and a quarter percent off the highs, where it should start to find some support. Oil's holding steady, like I said, right in the seventy dollar range, with no sign of weakness. But the OPEC Plus meeting does begin today with an announcement due out on Thursday. Expectations are for the cartel to slowly increase production by about five hundred thousand barrels a day beginning in August. But don't expect this to put any pressure on prices at all. Uh, because demand is robust, the economy is strong, the global economy is waking up, so just sit tight, because we're going to be at $80 by the end of the summer, and if Goldman's right, we're going to be at $100 by the end of the year. But I'm not so sure if Goldman's completely right, but if they are, right? And the Wall Street banks are doing exactly what I told you in my note uh, two weeks ago, after the result of the stress test, right? When the Fed gave everyone the green light. So the big banks are all now announcing big dividend increases and stock buybacks. Yesterday, Morgan announces they're doubling their dividend. JP Morgan is increasing by their dividend by 11%. Goldman by 60%. Bank of America is going to increase it by 17%. And Kathy Wood, in another move, announces that she and the ARK Investment Fund has filed with the SEC to create a Bitcoin ETF. And if it is approved, it will trade under the symbol ARKB. Um, 
And, and also her ARK Disruptor ETF, ARKK, which everyone was calling for dead, uh, you know, three weeks ago when growth through came under pressure last month, rising rates, the economy, blah, blah, has done a complete turnaround, gaining back 35% off of the May low and has now pierced all three trend line resistance points and appears to be on its way to challenge its all-time high of $160 a share. This does make sense because the NASDAQ is also up 11% off the, uh, off the May lows. When all the talk about rising rates and what that was going to do to the growth days, blah, 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 uh, what that was going to do to the whole sector, right? And since rates aren't rising anytime soon, according to Jay Powell, we can expect the party to continue. And as expected, the growth trade outperformed value yesterday with growth rising one full percentage point while value got whacked falling about six tenths of a percent. There's no economic data today that's going um, to that's going to be considered a market move at all. So we all await. U.S. investors and international investors are all awaiting for uh, tomorrow's ADP and Friday's NFP employment report, right? Two, the two most important data points this week. And all the whisper numbers tell us that the reports, both reports are going to be stronger than the expectations. So we're going to see about that. U.S. futures this morning are churning. The Dow's up 48. The S&P is down one. The Nasdaq's off 18. The Russell's down two. Very much the same story, right? Building excitement over a supposed infrastructure bill. No change in stimulus. No change in rate. Better earnings are expected, uh, and this is all going to continue to force money into stocks, but it does feel tired. I know I keep saying that, but it does feel tired. European markets are all up about a half a percent this morning. Concerns over this rapid spread of this latest COVID uh, variant across the Asia region doing nothing, nothing to blunt demand. The European Central Bank has started to discuss when and how to begin a taper that's going to unwind the massive emergency bond purchase program launched last year to deal with the pandemic, with COVID, just like the Fed did about three weeks ago, right? Now, to be clear, this is not a conversation about a broader taping uh, taper program that is going to end the great financial crisis bond purchase program that's coming. The ECB is going to follow the Fed, and the Fed's expected to do that later this year, and the ECB has already said that they will follow in the Fed's footsteps. Eurozone inflation coming in at uh, 27.1, up from 22.2, and producer prices at 36, up from 29.9, suggesting that inflation is raising its head across the European region. Your Bitcoin's up another 2% at 35,600, Ethereum's trading at 2,200, and Coin still trading at 26 cents. The S&P closed at 42.90, just a whisper away from 4,300 and another new high after testing as high as 42.92. Traded in a tight range of 42.74, 42.94 as investors force the close of the S&P higher and higher each day and it just sets it up for another test higher the next day. Futures this morning suggest that we're going to churn again today. We may try to push up and through 4,300, but again, 4,300 is a big psychological round number. So I think it might find some... Uh, some resistance there, but look, uh, it is what it is, right? You know what you can do? You can text the word invest to 21,000 on your phone to get my digital business card. Feel free to download it. Give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I'm always happy to discuss the markets and happy to discuss what's going on and any concerns you might have. You can also uh, find me on Twitter uh, at Kenny Polcaro. So what are we doing for dinner tonight? This is a really versatile dish, and there's a bunch of different ways you can make it, but that's really the beauty of cooking, right? Is that you can kind of create your own, you can change some of the spices up, you can change how you make it, you can substitute hot sausage versus sweet sausage, uh, you can substitute, you know, hot cherry peppers versus sweet cherry peppers. So depending on your taste buds is really going to dictate how you make it. But it is a classic Italian dish of chicken and sausage, right? Um... But as long as you get the basics down and you know what to put in it, then you can kind of create your own. So here's what you need. Um, here's what you need to try this, right? You need legs and thighs. Breast, breast meat does not work well for this recipe, right? You need legs and thighs, particularly on the bone is always better, right? Uh, the dark meat is tender, it's juicy, and it's moist. You need sweet Italian sausage, although you can use hot Italian sausage if you like. You need sweet cherry peppers. Again, you can use hot cherry peppers. You can even mix them if you want. Um, you need potatoes. You need garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper, Italian herb seasoning. You need some white wine vinegar, chicken stock. Um, and you need, to, uh, you need some red wine vinegar, excuse me, and white wine and chicken stock. And then you need cut Italian parsley, right? So you want to preheat your grill so it gets nice and hot. In the meantime, preheat your oven. 
to 475 degrees. In a big roasting pan, you want to take the potatoes. You can slice them, you can cube them, you can quarter them, you can do them any way you want. Typically, bite size is usually better, right? Season it with salt and pepper, add some Italian herb seasoning to the potatoes, a little dash of olive oil, and maybe a dollop of butter. Toss it so the potatoes are... are, are uh, are recovered in the oil, you know, they're, they're marinated in the oil, and stick them in the oven for about 25 or 30 minutes. In the meantime, while that's happening, you're gonna rinse your chicken, you're gonna pat it dry with a paper towel, you're gonna season it with salt and pepper, and a little bit of the herb seasoning on the chicken as well. Now set that aside. In a big saute pan on medium high, uh, 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 frying pan, you know, add some olive oil to the pan, go around a couple of times, and when the oil is hot, you're going to add the chicken pieces skin side down. You want to hear it sizzle, right? You're going to cook it until the chicken's golden brown. You don't want to, you don't want to burn it, so careful. Just turn the pieces, probably cook it three, four minutes on each side, turn it over, cook the other side, maybe turn it back a little bit. Um, but you just don't want it to burn, but you want it to kind of get that golden brown, uh, flavor, one, uh, color. Once it's done, remove the chicken pieces and place them in the plate. Take the, the potatoes out of the oven now after they've cooked for 25 minutes and put the chicken pieces right in the roasting pan with the potatoes. Next, go out to your grill, take your Italian sweet sausages and cook the sausages, right? Don't burn them, just cook them, rotate them, get them, you know, you're gonna cook them maybe five or five or 10 minutes max because they're gonna continue to cook in the oven. Once you do it, bring it in, slice the, slice the sausages into little bite-sized pieces Add that to the roasting pan with the chicken and the potatoes. Now you're going to add the chopped garlic to the frying pan. You're going to saute the garlic until it's nice golden brown. Do not burn it. Add the sweet cherry peppers. You can slice them if you want. Remove all the seeds. Saute all that uh, until, you know, probably five or six minutes. Now you're going to add about a half a cup of red wine vinegar. Scrape all the sides of the pan. Get up the brown bits. Let the red wine vinegar kind of reduce by half. Now you're going to add a cup of a half a cup of white wine, like the Pinot Grigio Santa Margarita, if you want. Add it in there, bring it to a boil, let that reduce by half. If you want to thicken it up, you can always add a, a tablespoon of flour or cornstarch to thicken up the sauce. I don't think you need to do it, but if you want to, feel free. Uh, once you do that, now you're going to add about a cup, maybe a cup and a half of chicken stock. Bring it up to a boil, stir it, mix it all well. Now take the whole thing and pour it over the chicken and the sausage and the potatoes. Put it back in the oven at 425 degrees and let it cook in there for probably another 15, 20 minutes max, no more than that. Um, you just want everything to kind of blend together and you want to make sure that the chicken's cooked, right? Uh, and then when you take it out, uh, you want to just take the uh, take the Italian parsley that you've cut and just decorate it with the Italian parsley. Now look, this works great for a summer barbecue or a big family dish because you can put it out on a big platter. Once you make it, you can present it on a big platter and then put the parsley on top. You get a little bit of everything, right? You get the potatoes, you get the sausage, you get the chicken. Uh, serve this with a big, large mixed green salad in the summertime or watermelon and tomato salad. Uh, you might you might also serve it with, you know, maybe you're going to make some grilled ribeyes and you're going to have kind of a, a smorgasbord of, of food. But one way or the other, this is a great dish. It's not really difficult to make, and it presents well for a big for a big family event. So I hope you enjoy this dish. It's really simple to make, and like I said, you can make it your own by changing some of your seasonings or changing the the uh, sweet sausage for hot sausage and sweet peppers for uh, hot peppers, depending on your your taste. And remember, you can always mix them too. You can have sweet and hot at the same time if that's what you choose. One way or the other, the great thing about cooking is you get to invent it and you get to make it your own. In any event, the day's getting started. Take good care. We'll see you tomorrow morning.